Welcome to another Down the Rabbit Hole video. I was talking a while ago about the items in my Star Wars collection that relate to Luke Skywalker in his Bespin Fatigues outfit from uh, The Empire Strikes Back. I kind of started off uh, when I was doing videos about the lightsabers that I have, both the ones that light up in blue and also just the basic hilt. Um, and then a uh, while later I thought, you know, I should actually combine all of those with the other video I did where I actually wore my Bespin Fatigue jacket. Uh, that was a really uh, cherished entry in my collection. And I thought to myself, I know, I'll round it all off with this, the blaster and the holster that it comes with. And um, there's a reason why, but I actually kind of got sidetracked because then May the 4th happened, Star Wars Day, and I wanted to do a little something different for that. So I thought, well, I'm going to talk about the Harmies Despecialized Edition of the Star Wars Trilogy for Star Wars Day, and had quite a lot of interesting feedback, including Harmy himself, which is really nice. Uh, but now I thought, okay, I'm going to get back to that other idea I originally had of the, um, the Luke Skywalker Bespin getup. Um, now, this is the blaster and the holster, and it, it is life-size. It fits. Um, where did I get this? Well, this is a bit of a story. This one actually uh, was one of the very first items I had ever bought as what we now call cosplay, but this is very old. I got this set, I think, in 1988 or 1989. And um, what had happened was I was flipping through an old uh, Starlog magazine and there was an ad in the back pages of a company out of uh, Anaheim, California called Marco Enterprises. And they make all kinds of science fiction props. And I got their catalog and I started flipping through and I was really impressed at the stuff that they sold. I mean, you know, they got Star Trek things, they've got um, Battlestar Galactica things, uh, a variety of items, Blade Runner, Logan's Run, you name it. And they also had the X-Wing pilot helmet, which you've actually seen. I got that one. I got the Marco Enterprise uh, X-Wing helmet. Uh, it has been seen briefly when I talked about the um, X-Wing toy, and I'm actually going to do a full-on video about that helmet because it's from Marco and it's awesome. But before I get to the helmet, I thought, well, this one here, this blaster holster set is kind of my most cherished item that I ever got from Marco. Now, it's important to note that it was the late 80s, um, and the what we call cosplay now, I don't think was really a thing back then. And so uh, to, to discover a company that was making props uh, was quite a surprise. It was a new thing. Um, clearly, Lucasfilm and various others and uh, Paramount for the Star Trek stuff, uh, they obviously hadn't really been clamping down on any um, memorabilia merchandising in this kind of area because Marco Enterprise was able to run for years making these props and doing a, a pretty good job. I mean, you have to remember it was the late 80s and he had no internet resource to go with. I mean, there was the internet back then, but I'm sure it was really, really basic. Um, so I guess what he was using was probably photographs from books and also um, VHS uh, source material. So by today's standards, a lot of the Marco Enterprise stuff, it's not the right size. It's not the greatest quality, but it was at a reasonably affordable price. I'll come back to that. But it was also good enough. And certainly in that time, you didn't have anything else. I mean, I would have completely gone for this Luke Skywalker belt and holster and, and uh, gun uh, if it existed back then. It is available now, and it's something in the $500 price range. Uh, but since I've got one now, I don't really feel the need to buy another one, even though it is now officially licensed, etc. This was my solution back in the 80s, and this is the gun that I kind of, I don't know, I kind of cherish it. Now, uh, to that price tag thing. Well, when this was out, the gun was, on its own, was $150, and then if you wanted to get the holster set, that was another $125 US. So I was looking at 275 bucks, and at that time, this is when I was living in England, so I was going to have to ship from California to the UK, that was going to incur a big price. This is a big item. 
So I was really on the fence about getting this because I thought, well, I've always loved the blaster set and there's something that I've always wanted to do, which is actually going to come up at the end of this video. Uh, but can I rationalize spending $275 plus shipping for a plastic toy gun? And remember, I'm, I'm not a kid anymore. Like this is in, in an era before cosplay. This is like, well, what are you ever going to do with this thing? You've got, a, you're going to buy a plastic gun and a leather holster, which is very nice. And what are you going to do with it? It's just going to sit on your shelf. And it has for decades. But uh, let's talk a little bit about it. Now, I'm going to actually uh, open it up here and show you the gun to begin with. There it is. It's uh, based on a, um, a Mauser pistol, and uh, was this little scope was added on. Now, everybody who knows the actual uh, history of these guns, what are these, the DL-44? Um, everybody who knows the history of these guns, I don't really need to go into a lot of detail about this. I'm going to talk specifically about Marco Enterprise's version of it. Um, in the catalog, it says that it's... Um, got a, uh, what is it, a broom handle in brown and uh, metal finishings. I guess in that catalog, um, that may have been true at the time, but by the time I ordered mine, uh, he must have stopped doing that. Because if you look closely at this one, uh, it's just plastic. I mean, it's very lightweight, uh, a bit flimsy. Uh, the scope kind of um, wiggles a little bit, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, and it's, you know, it doesn't have the brown handle. It's all black, just one solid piece of plastic. And yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, it came with a little stopper, which uh, I didn't remove on purpose. It actually just broke free. Uh, I've got it in one of those pouches I'll show you in a second. Um, and actually over time, even the nozzle has come loose. I mean, uh, as you can see, this is just glued on, uh, very basic stuff, but for the time, for the late 80s, and me wanting a blaster and wanting to be able to do this thing that I'm going to be showing you in a minute, yeah, uh, sign me up. I totally want to get this. So I did. Um, now, what's interesting is I, I'd like to, um, I'm going to see if I can find some pictures of actual Mausers. One thing that people complain about when they uh, talk about the Marco Enterprise version of stuff, not only is it not the right size, they say it's pockmarked with little bubbles and things, and there are... Yeah, there are some indications. In fact, I'll do a close-up in a second of, like, um, limited... Uh, and there's... Oh, there you go. There's a little ME on the nozzle there that indicates this is a Marco Enterprise gun. Um, yeah, like, it's 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 got little um, indications of where the plastic mold was just uh, rapidly filled and then uh, public, or uh, produced and then mailed out. It's not the highest quality, certainly compared to that expensive one uh, officially licensed by Lucasfilm. Uh, this is, you know, cheap. Uh, you can kind of, there's another ME right there. You can make out the seam of the plastic there, that kind of stuff. Uh, very lightweight, but you know what? Honestly, I'm happy with it. It it sort of, it looks good enough. It's not perfect. It's not exact, but yeah, there's a little bit of pock marking there as well. Um, but what's interesting though, now I'm going to see if I can, as I said before, see if I can find some pictures of Mausers I'm going to do some close-ups here, especially along the spine, where you can actually see what I think was the targeting mechanism of the Mauser. All right, so we're just here's the scope here, and there's the handle there, and the triggers down here. If you look carefully, though, you can see there are little numbers listed along here. Um, it starts at uh, 100, 150, 200, 250. And there's a little... This is all molded together as one piece, but I think on a Mauser... I seem to recall in like Lawrence of Arabia or whatever, um, they did flip this thing up and that would be like some kind of a range thing and that's how you would shoot the pistol, I, I think. So for him to have included this, I think he must have had a pretty decent um, item, a, a decent Mauser that he scaled this from. Um, and I think, now there's the hammer and uh, this is all solidly one piece. I can't I can't turn or pull any of these things. But there's a stopper here. Now, I'm hoping that's something that he stuck into the plastic mold to stop the hammer from actually going through there. Or does a Mauser actually have a piece there? But anyway, there is um, a bit of a close-up detail of this pistol. 
And again, there's the uh, ME for Marco Enterprises. But I did find that interesting. I mean, having one of these in my hand, never actually seeing a Mauser up close, at least not, not at the time that I bought this, um, I wasn't sure when I saw like those little markings. I thought, oh, is that is that real stuff from an actual pistol? That's kind of cool. So let's put the blaster back in the holster here. It does fit very nicely, and uh, the little securing strap works great. Uh, when I first got the actual holster itself, I was um, a little uncertain, having not really bought a lot of leather items in my time, uh, I was a bit concerned because it was really stiff. I mean, it has loosened up and it's actually nicely wearable as a belt now. But each of these pieces was super stiff. And I just thought, oh no, I'm not going to be able to wear this thing. It's formed in a weird shape. I mean, the way it was shipped to me, it was just like any brand new piece of leather. It was really, really stiff and sore to, to wear. Now it's, it's loosened up a great deal. It's much more like a real belt. And um, this thing that holds the, uh, the gun in, like the actual holster piece here, has remained very stiff over the years. Uh, this strap for around the leg, uh, that also was very, very uh, stiff when I first got it. But as you can see, it's, it's nicely loosened up over the time. Now, um, it's very close to the one in the film. I mean, you've got first the buckle, and then this, uh, I'm not even sure what this little pouch was considered for uh, ammunition. Not like Luke ever actually changed ammunition. The holster itself. And then we've got uh, a couple of pouches and they do actually hold things. In fact, I've been keeping things inside here, which I'll get to in a minute. Uh, a D-ring here for, I think, in the uh, Marco catalog, it's described as what that's what you would keep your droid suppressor uh, immobilizer on. And then this this is very, very cool. This is what the uh, lightsaber hangs on, and obviously the rest of the belt. Uh, this is very, very cool to me because I had seen Luke grab his lightsaber off this hook. I don't know exactly what way to describe it. And I remember thinking as a kid, like, how does that work? How does it not fly off when he's dangling upside down on Bespin and things like that? And now that I see this thing, I understand the actual logic. I've actually brought along my Park's saber here, and the reason why is because it has the D-ring, and I can just loop it on there. That would have been how it would have hung in the movie, and that's fine. But what kept it from falling off? Well, this is actually somewhat bendable steel here, and I'm guessing um, Luke or certainly Mark Hamill on set would have maybe squished the metal there to keep it from. Well, okay, that that fell off there. I don't want to. I don't want to push this too hard because it is, you know, the original piece of steel, but. You could just press it down with your thumb and it would actually close that uh, little hook so that the lightsaber would be less likely to fall off. And then when you wanted it, you just bend this back with your thumb and pull the weapon off. So that was very, very cool. That was something I was very appreciative to see on this holster set. Unfortunately, what I was not terribly thrilled about, and uh, it's kind of related to that little silvery hook, was the... Um, was the silvery belt buckle itself. It's very, very reflective and uh, it, I mean, I'm glad that over all these years of banging around, it still looks brand new, but it looks a little too new if you ask me. I mean, it's way too shiny. Um, in comparison, I just thought I'd bring along another belt that I have. This is the one that I actually wear at work, and uh, it's a little reminiscent of Luke's belt from Return of the Jedi. It doesn't have any D-ring holders or anything like that for a lightsaber, but uh, it was an actual real belt that I saw in a store, and I thought, well, that looks a lot like the one Luke wore in Return of the Jedi. I'm going to buy that. And as you can see, there's the, the belt buckle is more like what I would expect from the film. It doesn't, doesn't reflect. I mean, it's, it's reflective, but it's not mirror uh, kind of surface on there. Unfortunately, this one is a mirror surface, and I'm not too thrilled about that, but I'm certainly not going to complain. I'm very happy with this uh, overall. Back to the pouches. I mentioned I do actually keep items in here. Now, uh, some of them are just little D-rings, in case that one that I have on that park saber ever goes missing. But what I also got is a little Allen key here. Now, why have I got that? And why is it in a little plastic bag? First of all, that's just so I don't, I don't lose it. Uh, what that's for is I do find, again, I guess due to the um, simplified nature of how uh, 
Marco Enterprises was making this. Uh, this scope does wiggle a bit, and it's got a little Allen key screw in there. Uh, it's just um, a nail kind of thing digging into the plastic. So if I if it ever gets too loose, I just take the Allen key and I tighten it up. I don't tighten it too much though, because again, it's just digging into the plastic. And if I was to score that or like turn it far too much, I'm sure eventually I would just be digging an empty hole, and then this the whole thing would fall right off. But that's why I've got the Allen key. Let's put the Allen key back. Um, now in this pouch, actually, there's the piece of plastic that used to stick in the nozzle. In fact, I'll uh, bring that back out and show you. Uh, yeah, I guess um, we all know that there are laws about having guns, prop guns, etc. And originally that was just stuck inside there as a way of showing, oh no, this is not an actual firearm, you cannot possibly use it. But I didn't intentionally remove it, it just licked, licked this actual nozzle itself just eventually came loose over the years and I just popped it off and I thought well I'm not going to be walking around in public places with this so I'll just leave it like that. Little did I realize years later I would be walking around public places. I haven't actually worn this at any events yet. Um, I will I'm sure at some point and I know nowadays they stick a yellow ribbon thing around the end of any guns so that uh, the security in the building knows it's nothing to be worried about. On the subject of wearing this thing in public, I've mentioned before, I'm a member of the RPF, which is a great collection of cosplayers and prop makers, and um, they actually had a little um, forum thread talking about Marco Enterprises. Whatever happened to them? Do you guys remember them? And various complaints about uh, what the quality was like. But in the time that this was made, yeah, absolutely, this was pretty decent for the price tag. And nobody else was doing it back then, that's another factor. Uh, so I'm going to link to that thread down below, and I'll probably be inserting this video in the bottom of that thread. Uh, also, if you want to have a look at a full catalog, uh, uh, there was a fellow on um, uh, Blogspot, I'll put his link down below as well. He actually shows uh, what was in a complete catalog, I think from 1993, and it's pretty impressive what Marco Enterprises used to make. Um, all the different kinds of uh, uh, science fiction properties, the kind of things that he would make. I mean, he, he makes a minigun from T2. Like, he does, he did everything back in the day. He is still around, actually. Um, also, as part of that RPF link, I found where he is. Uh, he's got a presence on eBay. Uh, his name is Marco Number 4 Galactic Supply. Again, I'll put a link down below. Um, hasn't sold too much recently, but he is still alive and kicking and making his stuff. Um, but, uh, yeah, clearly the, the various, uh, license holders came after him, much like I'm sure they did a lot of people back in the late 80s, early 90s, and put the kibosh on the different things they used to make and sell. Uh, it's okay, though, because, as mentioned in the RPF thread, it, the quality wasn't stellar, uh, you can get much better stuff, either officially licensed or homemade. Uh, people are making stuff today that is uh, on par with the kind of things that you can buy in proper stores. But back in the day when Marco Enterprises was doing it, nobody else was. So it's got a little bit of a nostalgic tinge to it. That kind of thing. Now, of course, the big question is, does this still fit? It does, I will prove it, but again, I bought this thing when I was in my early 20s, and uh, I've uh, gained a bit of girth around the waistline since those days, as I'm sure many have. So um, I'm down to my last uh, notch in the belt, but it does fit. Um, here we go, let's, uh, let's try it on right now. Okay, so let's try this thing on. It does in fact fit, but unfortunately, as I say, I'm down to the last notch. Here we go. Gun on the side. I can do the uh, leg strap there. I could maybe go to the middle one back in the old days, but uh, you know what, for that sake, that'll work. And uh, unfortunately, because I am down to the last uh, notch, the little clip for the lightsaber is kind of on my side. Should be maybe here. Well, that's just old age for you. So there we go. It fits. Oh, it does fit. Barely, but it does fit. Um, so before I go, the, I had mentioned at the top of this video, there's a, a thing that I had always wanted to do. And uh, it involves both the, um, the lightsaber hilt, this blaster set, 
and the Bespin jacket. Um, when I saw a particular scene in The Empire Strikes Back, I don't know, it struck a chord with me and I always thought, I'd like to recreate that. And so now I can. I feel cold. Death. That place is strong with the dark side of the force. A domain of evil it is. And you must go. Your weapons. You will not need them. I hope you forgive me a little nerdy moment there, but that was pretty awesome. All right, until next time, we'll see you down the rabbit hole.